today we are really focusing on the portion of the Humane Society where they blend families with the perfect pet. We met a cutie that I want to take home so bad before the break. Yeah, he doesn't want you to leave without him today. We heard yesterday there's more than 100 pets waiting to go home with someone, and that's just not okay. It is not acceptable. Each of those pets has a unique story of how they ended up in the situation where they need help. Brandy Burke and Christian Gonzalez are here to talk a little bit more about that. And I did say before the commercial break, it's not always a good story of, of the path these animals take. Christian, you know, how do these animals end up at the Humane Society in the first place? Well, there's, uh, they're here with us mainly because, you know, they're, they're looking for, you know, the people who own these animals are wanting to at least bring them to us so that we can place them in, in, a, in a good home. Uh, as far as the reason why, there's so many reasons. It could be finance, it could be, it could be that a medical situation, it could be, sometimes it's, you hear the saddest stories, you know, why these animals come here and they just can't take care of them anymore. So to me, when they bring them to us, it's almost like they're showing that last bit of compassion towards these animals for us to place them in the proper home. And it can't always be a good walk for the animals to come. I mean, it's a scary situation for them, especially if they come from a high-stressed home. How do you guys really reduce the stress with these animals to make sure that they're comfortable and get them back to where they should be? Well, we have, we have a lot of programs uh, for, for feline and canines. We have a behavioral program. We have programs that they, you know, we're, we're able to work with them on a daily basis. You know, we have all these tremendous volunteers that we get. Um, we have, you know, over a hundred. Uh, we have some amazing dog walkers. Every single day they get walked. Mm -hmm. As far as the felines go, we have people staying after hours, after we're closed, just to go in there and just kind of socialize them. So we do everything we can, you know, with, with what we have. And I know we always like to have volunteers come in, help walk the dogs, get them out of, uh, you know, the kennels. We try to make sure that they, they're happy dogs, you know, while they're there so that when they're ready to go into a home where somebody will walk them every day, we, you know, we do those little things uh, to make sure that they're happy and healthy along the way. And now, Brandy, I know we talked a little bit before the commercial break about uh, being a no-kill shelter. And I know a phrase I've kind of heard a lot, a lot is this thing called a live release rate. Uh, what, what does that phrase really mean and what does that mean to you guys? So it's this really compli complicated calculation yeah. that, that animals coming into a shelter, animals leaving a shelter. So there's a lot of detail that goes into it. But it's basically uh, animals that come in that are um, treatable, that they can be rehabilitated and actually are able to leave uh, the facility uh, either through placement or adoption. So through another organization or through adoption. Um, the Humane Society has for the last uh, several years now maintained a 95% or higher live release rate. Uh, so that means that the animals that come through our door were able to uh, either behaviorally rehab rehabilitate or we are able to medically treat for neglected <coughs> issues. Something I didn't know until the first day mm -hmm. of the telethon is that you guys do off-site adoptions. You actually take the animals off-site, get them adopted. You had some great success stories. Um, Andrea shared one with us. Tell us a little bit about that and also tell us about the posh stores. So our posh stores have been in existence since 2009 and 2010 and I actually just pulled some numbers this morning and we have um, completed almost 8,700 adoptions between our location at Park Mall and our location at Lawn Cantata Mall. Um, we also have a lot of other off-site mobile adoptions so we you know we'll go to a lot of different places um, Trail Dust Town and um, you know Geico. We've been at, at different places and we take pets trying to uni unite them with people. So in, since 2009 our off-site model has done about 15,000 adoptions outside of the shelter walls which equates to about 35 percent of total organization adoptions in that time frame. Um, and it's just a different experience for people. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fun environment. It's an opportunity to, to not be overwhelmed by uh, you know huge numbers of animals and it's just a really successful uh, venue for placing animals. Almost fate. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. You're out and about and you meet a dog and you're like, oh, I've been wanting one. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> they knew I was going to come here today. They knew I was going to be I here. I always think people go, you know, at Lawn Cantata, they're stopping to get a coach purse and they end up with a kitten. It's I know. <laughs> that sounds like a shopping day for me. <laughs> come home with a kitten all of a sudden. Well, I know we have all these, you know, places we're talking about posh that's always, always there, but we also have a great event that's going on this holiday weekend so you can get a barbecue and a dog. 
So where, where are we uh, going to be doing this special? So we are going to have uh, adoption specials this weekend at our main campus. Yep. Uh, it's $25 off the uh, initial adoption fee and it's 25% off merchandise. All of the merchandise we sell is tax free and it all goes back to support our organization. So we encourage people to buy a collar, a leash, bowl, litter box, um, toys at our facilities when they, when they do their adoption. So Humane Society is really one of those organizations. It's so well rounded that when people do come in, they can leave with the expectation that they're going to get all the questions answered that they have, all the help that they need. I mean, even having it on site so that they can buy a bed while they're there and really ask questions like, is this the right one? Are they too small? I mean, I think that's <laughs> fantastic. And this is why the donations are so important. We yeah. really need these donations to come in. This is our last day as the oldest and largest nonprofit animal welfare organization in Southern Arizona. The Humane Society thrives because of viewers like you. Every dollar donated will make a difference for animals in need. To make your pledge for pets, call 881-7401 or log on and visit hssaz.org.